perovskites are like a three component system. They adhere to the same structure as calcium titanate. Calcium titanate is, uh, there's a picture of it here. It was named after Lev Perovsky and discovered by Gustav Rose in 1839. Perovsky is a Russian name and hence the name, if it sounds Russian to you, it's, that's because it's Russian, okay? So perovskites are named after like this Russian person. He gave the money and he discovered it. And the person who gave the money got to keep the name. So make of it what you will. <laughs> um, the perovskites we work on in um, solar are also ABX3 structures following this calcium titanate structure. But in our special case, the A, it's a cation, is either cesium, the small molecule methyl ammonium, this, this, this one here, or former medinium, the, this molecule here. The B is a metal, it's lead or tin, and the X is a halide, it's uh, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. And as you can see here, the structure, these are interconnected oct octahedra. In the center of the octahedron, you have a metal, and in the corners, uh, you have uh, the halides. And these octahedra, when they are connected, they leave a gap. And it's in this gap that you put the cation, cesium MA or FA. Okay? And um, maybe just to keep in mind, the metal halide is usually very important for the uh, electrical properties, much more important than the cation in many ways. It's because they often form uh, covalent bonds, ionic bonds. There's a lot of interaction between uh, the metal and the halide. There is less interaction with the cation, and that's also why the cation has a has a different role, let's say, from the metal halide cage. That's, uh, I mean, uh, that's um, something to keep in mind uh, simply. And without getting too much into the details, uh, perovskites were these kinds of perovskites, especially, were discovered in 1978. You can see it here, uh, published in uh, Zeitschrift für Naturforschung uh, by um, Dieter Weber in that year. The paper was written in German. It wasn't really noticed. Uh, so in 1978, there was hardly any citation. And then it, it started exploding from 2014. Everybody spoke German and started citing this paper. No, it's just uh, this paper was rediscovered in that year. And um, perovskites have become very interesting because uh, they are, by changing the components in the three component system, especially the halides, chlorine, bromine, or iodine, it's possible to go from 400 nanometers, so that's cesium lead trichloride, all the way to 1,050 nanometers, let's say. So that's a methyl ammonium tin lead iodine, which is remarkable. So you can really tune the entire band gap range from one to three E volts, which is different from other semiconductors, which cannot go as far, let's say. I mean, of course, there is also some possibility, but still this one goes really throughout the entire visible into the infrared as well. And uh, it's a novel material with uh, very exceptional properties, such as low temperature processing, inexpensive earth abundant materials, high quality semiconductors from solution. It has a high absorption, meaning it can enable flexible substrates and it can be fabricated in a wet lab, which is what you see here, uh, instead of a clean room, which is what you see here. So it's an interesting uh, new material group and it's really inspired a lot of research. Uh, as you can see in the next graph here, there was really uh, from from 2010 onwards, a real race for, let's say, high performances reflected also in the in the publications as well. So this was stopped in 2018, let's say, this graph, but there are already more than 6,000 publications back then, and now it must be more than eight, 9,000 publications already within such a short span of time. And you can see here the perovskite, it went from zero or 3.8% all the way to zero or 25% within only not just, like maybe five to six years. I mean, a very short time span, let's say. And um, going towards the 25% uh, is, is like a very exclusive club. Very few materials have managed and perovskites uh, have, have done it. And that's why, why people are so interested in it because they, they went into this high realm very quickly and it inspires a lot of uh, both commercial but also scientific interest for, for that reason as well. And uh, perovskites can be processed very easily and now I need to click so in this uh, platform, um, they can be done via um, solution processing. You see it here in this um, video, a liquid precursor, just a second. <laughs> so here we go. In this video we did during my PhD at Oxford. You can see when you um, spin code this uh, precursor, 
it forms uh, this uh, dark film, which uh, already is, is sort of the finalized perovskite material. So it's very easy to make it. And that's also what triggered a lot of the progress as well. You don't need to wait for many weeks until the data is, is until the devices are finished.